Liza Featherstone. I don't know why I'm waving. Hi, Liza. Hi. How are you? Hey, Liza. Good. How are you? Good. Okay. Welcome. So this is a great piece that you wrote at Jacobin Elite Feminist Ran Cover for Andrew Cuomo. Can you tell us what made you write this piece and what your findings were? Um, yeah. And as far as um, my um, findings, um, I, I should say, um, I really didn't um, report this piece. Um, this was a this was really um, a um, sort of an opinion piece or a synthesis on my part because um, people at the New York Times and the Washington Post and many other places did a lot of great reporting um, to draw on here, not to mention Attorney General um, Tish James, who did all the investigation. So just to clarify, yeah. Liza wrote this piece. She did not write the 100 plus page report from the Attorney exactly. General. I'm just, I, I'm just sort of want to clarify. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't do that much work on exposing Cuomo or yeah. the elite feminists. Um, it yeah. was it was all out there, and that, that that work of exposure was done by other people. What I found interesting here was, I mean, there are so many things, but the role of some um, elite feminists. Um, so a few um, a number of years ago, an organization called Times Up. Um, rose to prominence with the um, with the Me Too hashtag to bring to light the horrible experiences that a lot of women in Hollywood had at, at working for truly awful bosses like um, Harvey Weinstein. The organization kind of became um, almost synonymous with the Me Too movement. I mean, it just every like that phrase, "Times Up," um, and those activists were really um, the face of it in many ways. The lawyers and executive director. Um, were consulted by Andrew Cuomo um, on um, how he could get out of this predicament of 11, in which 11 women were accusing him of sexual harassment and in some cases assault and all the things that Time's Up um, was founded to fight um, in the workplace. They were consulted um, on you know, how to get one of the um, most high-profile, terrible sexist bosses off the hook and instead of saying fuck you Andrew Cuomo that's not our job you know um th no they did not say that um they um they they went along and and they consulted with him they now say in their defense that they told him to tell the truth and not smear victims but in some sense that's even worse because that would have been good advice for him. Right. But like that would have helped him. You know, I mean, and so whatever well, they told good. him. It's good that they apparently, it's good that they apparently believe that women should not be lied about and smeared and retaliated against. We want to give them well, credit for that. Yeah, yeah. But, but a low bar, right? It's a low I mean, bar is still <laughs> advising him. It's still PR advice. It's still yeah. PR advice. Yeah. Exactly. They were advising him to take the moral high ground, which is a PR move in right. his situation. So there's no excuse for what they did. Um, a number of um, women who um, were clients of Time's Up, women who have been helped by the organization um, in the past, um, or in some cases are dissatisfied with the amount of help that they did or didn't get. There uh, seem to be a lot of complicated stories around that. Um, but um, a lot of former Time's Up clients um, signed a letter um, on this issue, um, saying, you know, just to, um, saying how um, appalling it was and basically, you know, correctly analyzing this as um, Time's Up has chosen to side with power um, rather than um, ra rather than with the workers, rather than, you know, with the women. So it's a it's a disgraceful episode. One of the lawyers, Roberta Kaplan, um, has resigned from the organization. You know, she she gives the absurd reason, you know, that there's some kind of conflict of interest between her work as a lawyer and her work for Time's Up. And, you know, because of her, she isn't able to fully disclose all her work as a lawyer. I mean, it was just the most hedgy little nitpicky um, resignation letter. But obviously the reason is she has become an embarrassment to the organization because she did this. I right. mean, this letter is just like, I mean, yeah. like she, she should have said, you know, Cuomo's apology was better than this. You yeah. know, I mean, at least he said, you know, I, 
you know, I did the wrong thing. I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. Yeah, you know who, who, I mean, I think you're, it's kind of a sad state of affairs when Roberta Kaplan had, could learn a lot from uh, Andrew Cuomo's apology yeah. tactics. I but know. That's a really I mean, sad thing. To be but clear, really, yeah. his apology is terrible because he evades admitting the very worst things yeah that, well, it that, also, that, that, and, and concentrates on the most ambiguous things right. that most He's people would say. Yeah, like, yeah, you, know, yeah. you know i'm just really yeah. i'm not perverted i'm italian yeah 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 he exactly that as an, <laughs> yeah. as an italian american so you know nothing problematic there yeah so, yeah right um, exactly so so his apology was not good but it at least did contain a sort of a sense of being sorry, yes, <laughs> which like, I think this he, apology. Left. I'm sorry if anyone was offended by my being friendly and culturally determined. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry never. if my being Italian American made anyone feel uncomfortable. That was never my intention. I'm sorry you all are so racist against Italian Americans. That's really what it boiled down to. And the other thing we didn't look at this, we can look at this later, but like he told, he hides behind his daughters. He loves doing that, you know, in his oh, original. It's so film, gross. So oh. gross. I'm like so uh, tired of hearing about his daughters. Um, it's like when um, Obama said he, he wasn't going to approve plan B because he had daughters and he wouldn't want his daughters getting the abortion pill without him. What is like, he wants, oh, he wants, he's like, horrible. I want grandkids. I really want grandkids. So I'm yeah, not it's like, oh, horrible, horrible policy and all right-wing politics and then also too much information. Yes, like, seriously. You don't want to know that you're like lying in bed worrying about your daughters having sex. Yeah, Terrible. yeah, seriously. What is that like? Dude, that? you're Barack Obama. Like, just chill out, party. Yeah. I know. <laughs> go make I a know. joke about how you're going to drone the Jonas Brothers or something if they go out with your daughters. I mean, that's, at yeah. least that's on brand for you as a yes, big exactly. droner, right? You're not supposed to be the like Christian right. But here's... Here's part of her. I, I actually feel like we should start a new foundation. We should just take Times Up, abolish it, and put all the money into a foundation for Roberta Kaplan because I think she's really hurting. I think she's the victim here, and I'm not the only person who thinks that. I think uh, Roberta thinks that. So here's her her letter of resignation um, uh, to the board of Times Up. Uh, as you know, I helped establish and lead Time's Up and Time's Up Legal Defense Fund since their creation four years ago. Time's Up grew out of the belief that if women leaders used our influence to work with those in power to hold them accountable, we could make real strides forward. And we certainly have. Looking back over the last four years, we've accomplished more than I think any of us thought possible. Perhaps even more importantly, we did it together in sisterhood and solidarity, bringing together our respective expertise networks and experiences to elevate women's voices, advance new legislation, and force the culture to recognize that the status quo was no longer working. Yes, they forced the culture. They cupped they cupped the culture by the I breath. I think this is from the, yeah. Andrew, from the Andrew Cuomo school of first bore your audience with a long preamble so they don't yeah. think about the bad thing you did. Yeah, <laughs> but, and also pretend to be woke which he yeah. does as, as yeah. famously and as a New Yorker, I'm black, yeah. I'm Jewish, I'm Muslim, I'm I am disabled, gay. I'm gay, yeah. I'm a woman. I'm a woman seeking to control her body, amazing. which sounds so creepy. Like the second before any of this like sexual harassment yeah. stuff came out. He's a man seeking to control her. That's I mean, what he identifies like, as a woman and he happens to be controlling other but just women's like, bodies. I'm seeking to, like, I would never say that. I'm seeking to control my body. I mean, that makes it sound, I mean, maybe if I was about to have diarrhea, I would. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, seriously. But it doesn't what sound like how you talk about reproductive rights. Right, yeah. That's weird. Or like, yeah. Kegel, what are the exercises for your pelvic floor? Oh, Kegel, yeah. Yeah, maybe Kegel. That, that's yeah. Awesome. Like a diaper control. advertisement. Yeah, I, are you seeking body. to control your body? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm just, uh, so, uh, Okay, so advancing this and force the culture to recognize that the status quo was no longer working. Unfortunately, recent events have made it clear that even our apparent allies in the fight to advance women can turn out to be abusers. We have imagine felt that. that. Imagine. We imagine that. that. We've We're never not. found. We found. Know, we Very twenty fourteen, actually. You know, just like wow, uh, some of these woke guys—they're actually like uh, pieces of shit. You know. Very well, and it's also just the. The, the 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 pose of that sentence i mean given that the reason she's writing this letter is that she was involved with in consulting behind the scenes with him about how he could get out of this and it's like 
what so you're you're trying to make it sound as though you just learned about all this from the news cycle right um, well right when, unfortunately yeah. recent events have made it clear that even our apparent allies in the fight to advance women can turn out to, to be abusers uh we have felt the raw personal and profound pain of that betrayal it from is, you well yeah i know <laughs> like it has raised important questions about how and why time's up does what it does as well as demands on the part of advocates and staff for a kind of radical transparency so you were the bad guy right lady. i mean yeah. you're the person who they're feeling this the raw personal profound pain of that betrayal you did the betrayal or i guess what is she expecting us to believe that like she thought she was just helping out a decent guy who was being smeared by a bunch of women accusing him of that. She didn't know that he was an abuser. Uh, Don't believe women. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> right? <laughs> even if let's like let's say you thought that Cuomo, let's say you really thought that someone was being railroaded and set up. Like it's still if your time's up, you probably want to recuse yourself. Yeah, I mean, it's only yeah. like eleven women. Like that's so right. Bad. I mean, it, it's, it seems very, it, it's not credible that they thought 11 women were making right. this stuff up. Yeah. Well, you know, look, one we recent event, each other. after yeah. one recent yeah. event and another recent event, another recent event, another recent event, another recent event, another recent event. It's a lot of events. Event, another one, another yeah. one, another one, and another recent event after those recent events. And the only recent <laughs> events are that uh, it's now clear that Cuomo is not tenable. Uh, it's not viable. Uh, that's the recent event, and that he was going to resign. So we're going to have to go with Plan B. Uh oh, Call don't back. tell Obama. <laughs> yeah, don't tell Obama. Um. So anyway, so she really does a lot of soul searching, and uh, she makes it seem like she's just put in a, a an uncomfortable position because of because she happens to be a lawyer. Um. Maybe she relates to Cuomo because. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Some I, kind of creep solidarity. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that there there is a kind of um um you know ruling class or people in charge solidarity all along, which is right. how they got into this um this is how they got into this predicament. Yeah, so I mean, and Times Up is like pretty aligned with the Democratic Party. Oh, it's right? totally like, aligned. And so kind of like, I mean, uh, yeah. I I I don't want to like. I feel like this is not the first time I've heard of Time's Up kind of like being very aligned with you no. know, Democratic politicians, but I don't know. Yeah. We're going to hear about it more yeah. from Tara Reid, actually. Yeah, exactly. yes. But um, if we let's just finish this up. So um, very unfortunate recent events. Uh, my work as a lawyer is paramount to my identity. OK, get ready for some woke washing, woke wash of the week. My work as a lawyer is paramount to my identity and critical the way I've advocated for and achieved lasting change. It is, after all, how I helped to win marriage equality by representing Edie Windsor. My law firm, which was founded around the same time as Time's Up, has taken uh, on and continues to take on some of the most challenging and difficult matters, including three cases against Donald Trump, as well as cases against Jeffrey Epstein, the white supremacist responsible for the violence in Charlottesville, groups trying to undermine the legitimacy of the 2020 elections and many survivors of sexual harassment and assault whose names I cannot mention. She's also not mentioning um, that, um, um, that um, she, um, she last year um, defended Goldman Sachs in a lawsuit again um, by um, a woman who, um, who was accusing um, their chief global litigator of um of of her of harassment um and um and intimidation and and retaliation all I like that she, yeah. she's just humble she lies that she's humble she yeah. can't list her whole resume that's I right like that she identifies as a lawyer i know you i know, know. Like, i lawyer am identifies. a muslim i am gay i am a lawyer <laughs> I'm a lawyer. Seeking, I'm a lawyer seeking to control my body. Yeah, I'm a lawyer yeah. seeking to control women who are trying to sue for discrimination, seeking to elevate men, protect men. Um, let's see. And then, uh, okay, um, she can't even mention this, some of them. Uh, putting aside whether a model of radical transparency on the part of its leaders would have been consistent with many, if not most, of times of its achievements. I am a practicing lawyer sworn to uphold vital ethical duties of loyalty and confidentiality. Simply put, wait for it. The standards that apply to lawyers are different from and more stringent than ethical norms that apply to others. 
What? And I believe those standards are set. Guys, I mean, we all know the jokes based on this, right? Lawyers are more ethical than others. Yeah. That's why, you know, that whole genre of shark jokes, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, is based on lawyers being so uh, uh, ethically uh, uncompromised. Ethically non-monogamous? Yeah. yeah. Not that that <laughs> I mean, kind of. She is kind of. They are poly. I mean, they're poly. They represent a lot of, they're like poly conflict. Yeah. Conflict, they like represent a lot of different clients who have, who, they. it's like dating people who hate each other. Ooh, I would, Ooh. I would do that. I would do that. Well, that's fine as long as, but, but there's no transparency. Um, mm -hmm. So, okay, you guys, the reason that she had to defend Cuomo was because uh, she's so ethical. She had to advise him. And she goes, and I believe those standards are essential not only for the profession as a whole, but also for the administration of justice. As a result, I cannot offer the degree of transparency about my firm's matters now being demanded, since that would be contrary oh, yeah. to my responsibilities as a lawyer. I therefore have reluctantly come to the conclusion that an active litigation practice is no longer compatible with serving on the board at Time's Up at this time. And I hereby resign. Sounds like time's up for you're being at time's up. It has been difficult for me to reach this decision in light of the challenges facing women today. Now more than ever, and especially in light of the consequences of the ongoing pandemic, we know that time is still very much up and that much more change needs to happen. I look forward to continuing the fight for change and to advancing the mission we all share. Very truly yours, Roberta Kaplan. What, what about the pandemic made it difficult for her to realize that she shouldn't be advising a powerful man in ways to smear his accuser it, it's baffling i mean it really it really is a baffling letter and the most amazing thing about it is the lack of um is is the is is the lack of of any kind of apology you know like that you know we like i mean the organization itself has like put out so many like you know, constrict at least you, you know, to their credit, very constrict contrite statements, um, sort of acknowledging that they have been on the side of people who were causing harm, and they understand why um, people might feel some kind of way about that. I mean, <laughs> you know? it's, it's like, why do they have to go that far? You know, like if they yeah. need more money as a law firm, yeah. can they do some asbestos cases or something like that? Like, we can't you just get involved in some like personal injury shit? Yeah. And, like, why do they have to go all the way to the other extreme of like defending these abusers? I know why, but it's, I yeah. just kind of feel like, I don't know, man. Didn't someone and it's also that? like you build up um, a certain amount of knowledge capital about yes. the topic of sexual harassment and, you know, the and the sort of legal expertise. And then um, then you're going to turn around and use it to help Andrew Cuomo of course. Um, or this Goldman Sachs asshole. I mean, it's just amazing. 